Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running the game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger. And Joel Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battlemaster. Thank you for joining us once again after our brief break. If, you, ju- if you're just tuning in for the very first time, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel, where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for dungeon masters and guides for players. You'll also find prior episodes from this campaign available for your viewing there, too, which you can check out at youtube.com slash dungeon dudes. And... As of last week, Dungeons of Drakenheim is now available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify, thanks to the amazing efforts of Kyle. The first five episodes of the campaign are now available in an audio-only podcast form uh, for your listening pleasure, and more will be on the way. We will be putting them out at an accelerated rate until we catch up with the rest of the series, and then from then on, once we catch up, Everything will come out after the Twitch stream on Fridays, both the YouTube VOD and the podcast version. Uh, It'll probably take us a couple more weeks to catch up, but we are so thrilled to finally (laughs) have this out as a podcast as well. And if you are checking this out on the podcast, you can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. And you can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. This week's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim has been sponsored by our great friends at Dimension 20. We're spreading the news that Brennan Lee Mulligan and a team of veteran college humor comedians are back for season three of their D&D live play series, The Unsleeping City. If you love listening to uh, or watching actual play campaigns where the characters and the cast explore a dark, mysterious underbelly of a fantastic city... And I know you do because you're watching this show. (laughs) It's really worth checking out the first few episodes on the Dimension 20 YouTube channel. It's a wonderful example of just how far you can adapt the rules of D&D into a modern magical setting. It is the dark underbelly of New York in the modern day. And it is a truly awesome campaign. I've been watching the first few episodes and I even cribbed a few notes of my own from watching Brennan. So that's been a really big treat. Uh, You can watch the full series and much more uh, by subscribing at dropout.tv and you can get 50% off the first month by using the code ROLL50. So you can follow the links in the description below on YouTube and all the other platforms or check them out at dropout.tv. With that, let's return to the ruins. Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalk the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Welcome back to the ruins of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, a standoff has taken the halls and the ancient altar room of the Grand Cathedral of St. Vitruvio at the heart of the ruins of Drakenheim. As the sunlight reflects across the mirrored and vaulted dome above, sending light glittering down the chamber and reflecting off of the flames of Ignatius, the sword of burning truth. As our heroes stand in standoff between the assembled forces of the Hooded Lanterns the Silver Order, and many more. For they have assaulted Elena Kruger (laughs) in a moment of snap judgment 
to call her out before the assembled host. And quite a host has been assembled here indeed. For before you in the halls and the altar room and the altar and the the nave of the Grand Cathedral of St. Vitruvio, between the grizzled and veteran members of the Hooded Lanterns and the Silver Order, each of whom has fought valiantly in the battles thus, thus far, the heaviness in their eyes shows the grim determination that each bear, itching as they sense the coming conflict ro- rising front and center before them. In this room are assembled the Lord Commander Elias Drexel, the Knight Captain Theodore Marshall, the H- Flame Keeper Ophelia Reed, Drexel's lieutenants Petra and Ansem of the Hooded Lanterns, and the Royal Guard attending Queen Lenore. River and Eldrick are here as well representing the Amethyst Academy. And across the room, Lucretia Matthias stares you down from a crowd with piercing eyes, her thin face held with pursed lips. She is simply adorned in penitent robes with a hooded shawl, grasping her tome, the testament of the falling fire before her. She is whipcord thin. As we go around the hall, Eldrick Runeweaver is a tall black man with square-cut graying beard. He has his long, pockmarked face with rounded features, and his amber eyes glow softly behind his circular glasses as he scans the room intently. He wears the formal robes of the Amethyst Academy, and he carries an ashwood staff tipped with a glass-covered orb of delirium. There's a heavy chain necklace around his neck with a locket, and beside him is a towering construct of wood and stone, its eyeless gaze cast from a bulbous helmet. A large delirium shard is built into its chest. Beside him stands River, her hood down, her blue hair flowing out around her as she, too, holds a wand now tipped with delirium. She holds herself with an unsteadiness that you haven't seen in her before, as her eyes dart across, trying to read the situation. Across you, his warhammer drawn, Theodore Marshalls, the knight captain, looks at you with his grizzled and newly scarred face behind the eye patch that's over his left eye, left eye. <laughs> and you, you can really see now, like, when you first met him, he had this gleaming armor, and he is just covered in mud and blood. He was clean shaven when you first met, and now he just has Buddy, this stubbly beard. Preaching to the choir. I've been complaining <laughs> um, about he's this just, place. He's holding that his warhammer out like he's ready to drop judgment on the situation. Beside him is a fe- is is um, Ophelia Reed, and her large round face. Between overneath, uh, underneath the um, flame keeper's shawl that she wears, but she still has a cha- like she's worn chainmail and armor as well, and she grips the torch that all flame keepers carry as the symbol of the sacred fire, almost ready to use it to light the brazier in front of you, the altar of the sacred fire that is at the heart of the grand cathedral. Elias Drexel cracks his knuckles and rolls his broad shoulders. He's got the, his big armored pauldrons and the, the long cloak of the hooded lanterns behind him. And he, um, again, he's just become a grizzled man with all the battles that he's seen. He normally keeps his long hair quite braided, but it's come apart in certain sections. His beard is longer than, it, than you, it's ever been. And he's just scowling at the entire situation. Of course, across the room, Queen Lenore looks like an opulent living doll. In her majesty, she is wearing an immaculate green gown of tinseled satin, a corset embroidered in gold and silver, sable gloves, and she has a big fan ruff around her neck. Clearly, 
several hooded lanterns have found this amazing dress somewhere in the ruins because you've never seen her wearing this before. She's dripping with jewelry and upon her face is a porcelain mask and atop her head is a headdress and wig. You cannot see her expression for every inch of her is clothed, concealing her twisted features. And across, gripped in Petra's desperate arms as she looks at you for an answer as to what to do next is Elena Krieger, a Kruger, a short blonde haired woman with grizzled features and a tough exterior. She's smiling wickedly, also wearing the uniform and green cloak with golden trim of the Royal Guard over her padded gambeson, um, although her weapons have been stripped from her. There is a pregnant silence as everyone meets each other's gaze. And finally, the Lord Commander says, All right, you three need to explain yourselves immediately. What is going on? I mean, where do you want us to start? (laughs) We were just calmly collecting bones of a dragon and or yeah. the flame keeper. And we found a sword. And we came up here. And Elena is not who she says she is. And that's what the sword told us. Theodore Marshall turns to Ophelia Reed. And he says, Now, Flamekeeper, is that indeed that flame and sword of truth? Is that as Ignatius? Is that the sword of St. Vitruvio? And Ophelia replies, Why, yes. I'd never thought I'd see it, but that is Ignatius. It cannot abide any deception. It cannot abide any word of lies while it is drawn and held aloft and I mean this is why we had to act it's why we had to do what we did is because yeah Pluto is is the keeper of this sword now and and we act together as a group so if he said that she was not telling the truth we had to do something she said some words right before this whole incident occurred and those words were that the queen was here and so was Lenore now I know of two people who go by the name queen queen Lenore and one other I think everybody in this room knows who that other person is now why would Elena say something so bizarre the lord commander looks and scans over Elena and then look ba- looks back towards you. You accused one of my soldiers once already, Rolf Wagner. And when I questioned him, he was incoherent, mumbling. He didn't remember what had happened to him for weeks. Are you saying that the same thing has happened to Elena? Let me paint a picture for you, Lord Commander. It's Wagner that we had before. So Wagner was the Queen of Thieves. Well, the Queen of Thieves kept the real Wagner imprisoned. But the Queen of Thieves knew that we knew that. So a switch was made, which made us look like idiots. The Queen was still gaining intel from the Hooded Lantern somehow. We had our theories, but... Being wrong before made us question coming out with those theories. Mm. But now we stand with a sword that tells the a truth. sword says, lies! He lies! He knew the whole time of the deception and he didn't say anything. Why did he lie? Why didn't he tell him right away? It's okay. It's okay. And I start to pet the hilt and in a calming and I go, Lord Commander, that's not true. We knew Elena was the queen 
for quite some time, but we couldn't prove it to you. And we had been, when we tried to make the statement, we were wrong before. So we were worried that if we made the statement again and were incorrect, I mean, at, at some point you would stop trusting us. So we needed to find a way to corner her where she couldn't escape, just like she did when she was imitating Rolf. Wolf. Wagner. Wagner. <laughs> You're saying that <laughs> Elena is not Elena. But Elena is the queen of thieves. She looks like Elena. And Elena is somewhere else. Hopefully not dead, but likely imprisoned until she's ready to be released back when the queen needs to move targets again. It's just that Sebastian pounced on the opportunity. Well, actually, technically, uh, <laughs> Veo pounced <laughs> on the opportunity. <laughs> and uh, uh, we decided that enough is enough. And uh, she couldn't hide in plain sight any longer. <laughs> <laughs> and Ignatius is telling me most of this. Well, well done. It looks like we've got Drakenheim's most wanted then. If what you say is true. Well, your majesty, what do you have to say for yourself? Maybe I should let the three of you ask the first questions then. Hey. <laughs> um, so, do you, do you happen to have, like, our stuff that we can get back? <laughs> <laughs> We're going right to that. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Very intimidating, Veo. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, she's very intimidating to me. So, um, um, I'm glad we could get her around with all these witnesses. This makes me feel much stronger about doing this. She beat us up before, by the way. I, th I think, first of all, Elena, <laughs> in front of all of these people, can we just drop the act and... Yeah. Kill the charade. She says... The smile wipes from her face for a moment, and a small look of panic comes over her face and she jolts and says my name is Elena Krieger I'm a soldier of Westermar sworn royal guard to Queen Lenore von Kessel did she do her thing oh. again oh <laughs> she has a nothing from the sword what does the sword say but she the only the sword only told me that she passed her save. Right. So she's probably lying? <laughs> no. <laughs> now wait, a few minutes ago you said you had you said you're not who you say you are. A few minutes ago being two weeks ago. You said you're not who you say you are and that you have nothing to hide. You don't have who you think you have at all. You don't have me. You have nothing. I'm no one. And you took quite the gamble. I knew that you were going to betray me, of course. You know that they've been working for me this entire time. That's... Mm. Ignatius? But <laughs> Ignatius? <laughs> Are you sure you have the currency to play at the high roller's table? Are you really t ready to play this little game? Yes. Yes. Hmm. Elena. Yes. I don't stand for bullies in Drakenheim, and there's a whole lot of bullies trying to cut their piece of the pie out of this city. Pie. And you've been one of the biggest bullies of them all. Yeah, you're mean. Yeah. And you can't even see the knife at your throats, the dagger at your hearts, the sword poised over your heads waiting to strike or the fumes hanging in the air waiting for the match to strike if you think I'm a bully you want to play the real game look around at everyone in the room right now and let that sink in for a moment at who is here in one place 
Elena, I didn't say you were the only bully. Like I said, this city's full of them. Wait. There's an issue in Drakenheim, in case people here didn't notice. And since we have everybody together, I think it might be best if we try to work out the major issues. Because at the end of the day, we could be at each other's throats. This could turn into a massacre. Or we could realize that the real enemies are the monsters, the, the people who have taken Drakenheim, the people who want to claim it for themselves. And each of you keeps arguing that you want to claim it for yourself. But there's so much potential in this room to do something good and to maybe make things better. And now is the opportunity for us to figure out where everybody stands. Also, are you are you going to murder us all? <laughs> Please don't. I just want to... I know it's... I know before you left us alive because you like us and you think we're useful. Are we still useful, Elena? Don't... Queen of Thieves? Don't uh, start bowing to her already. <laughs> well, what is she... The night captain says, well, we have her. I mean... If we've got her right here, what is she going to do with all of us assembled here together? It doesn't even matter. It, <laughs> she can't fight us all. Clearly, lady, you, whoever you are, it's time to just give it up now. I mean, we could, why Why should we even bargain with a thief? <laughs> she, but she may. <laughs> she, she's probably gone. Um, I think she might be gone. Uh, Night Commander, we've dealt with her a few times, and uh, let's just say that um, anytime that you think you might have the upper hand, even in this situation like, where, where like, I'm making a bold play, <laughs> probably yeah. there's there's that sliver of a chance that um, we could all get blown up. The Queen of Thieves, <laughs> the Queen of Thieves, is a crafty lady. And she always has a trick up her sleeve. I don't think she's as cornered as we believe she is, which is why I'm relying on the fact that everybody's here <laughs> to mean that hopefully we're not all going to die. And I know this sounds kind of silly, but I think we're all kind of coming to this realization now. <laughs> and it's super scary. Now? Just now? I'm just... It's kind just of now. dawning on me. I mean, the just moment now. I was pointing my wand, I started to second guess uh, the <laughs> Queen of Thieves. Has... No, but we're but we're sticking to it. We're following through. Yeah. Sword. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so, Elena says, you want to talk then? You all want to invite these wizards over here and these this prophet down here is that what you call yourself prophet and our good old queen royalty to other royalty to just have a nice little conversation about how we're all going to get along i mean i doubt everybody's going to get along but ideally yes we're tr just trying to She's trying to go with it. <laughs> like we were just here collecting bones. Lenore and... <laughs> speaks up. She says, This woman is an imposter who claims a royal mantle with no purpose, with no right. Lord Commander, she is a criminal. And she shall be apprehended and executed. On the contrary, she is incredibly good at gaining information finding out secrets and knowing things that nobody else knows about this city. So I wouldn't be too quick to execute her given the fact that she might be one of our best resources. I disagree. I think we should kill her now. The and Lord, the, the night captain says, I'm inclined to agree. I think she's a huge threat. I, I agree with the Lord Commander and the Queen. I think we should just kill her right now. If you think she's put herself in a position where she could be killed that easily, I think you're greatly underestimating her. Finally, someone takes a little bit of sense. 
Actually, I would just like to impose a small restriction of my own and just ask that we all interact a little bit amicably for the time being, at least, if you're going to execute me. Lord Commander, Knight Commander, she's not going anywhere. I want to hear what everybody is bringing to the table before we go ahead and start executing. You want to make a deal with a thief? I want to hear possibilities. She has a right to a trial. (laughs) And I think... Lucretia Mathias speaks up. She has something that they want. Yes. But I think if you consider calling her a thief... (laughs) And they want it back very badly. And they know that if they kill her, they will never get it. I mean, we've all done some things since Dragonheim, you know, began. So that we're not proud of. So <laughs> we've, we've had some missteps. So you were working with her. Well, 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 Lord we were Commander, you knew. Under a pressured foot. You sent us in to gain intel and we told you exactly what happened down there. And that we agreed to work with her so that we could secure our safety and leave. Since that moment, have we done any action to go against you or your commands? What does she have on you? Some dirt? Uh, Yeah. What does she have? She has (laughs) information (laughs) that no one else in Drakenheim has been able to give us. She also robbed us. Yeah, she also has my stuff. But the information is about my father. And, and I don't my mother. and I don't see anybody else around Drakenheim offering that to us. I know a lot of things about a lot of people, Lord Commander, including you. Secret. Dirt, dirt, dirt. Like dirt. I said, she's great at gathering information. He replies, "What you think you know?" <laughs> Eldrick Runeweaver speaks up. You're all talking in circles. She is some sort of thief. What does she do? What does she have? There's magic all over her. You don't even know anything about what's going on with her. That poor girl right there, that's nobody. But who exactly who she says she is? She's been spelled. Spelled. Well, then, at least we have the Queen of Thieves in our presence through her. Indeed. So therefore, execution should probably be off the table. Yeah. Because, like I said, the Queen of Thieves is crafty. The Lord Commander turns to Elric and says. Elric, what do you mean? I can see it. The aura. Of powerful enchantment magic. It would be the type of magic that would be a, a mage of the Eighth Circle would need to be necessary to cast such a spell to hold someone's mind in their grasp. It's a dominate person spell. This is the real Elena Krieger. She is who she says she is. But there is someone who's controlling her like a puppet. I too knew this all along. Now Shut up, Ignatius. Would the would the person need to be casting the spell be the person that's possessing them, or could somebody cast it to have one person possess another person? I don't know everything about this spell except to recognize it. It's a powerful one indeed, but normally you would have to cast the spell yourself, to master the spell yourself in order to hold the strings. So whoever this Queen of Thieves is, he's more than just a thief. Oh, certainly. She, uh, 
She has a lot of people that work for her, and she has a lot of power in this city. And underestimating her would be a dire mistake for any of us to make. Ophelia Reed says, We should release the girl. I can undo the spell now. We, we'll just release her and be done with it. We don't need to execute anybody. I'm sorry, Ophelia, but I think... She's one of the major players here. And she needs to be part of this conversation. She does deserve a seat at the table with everything that she's shown she can do. For better or for worse. To help or hinder. But she's not even here. Well, it's like a proxy. Yeah. It's like So a- we've got nothing. It just means that you can't execute her, but we can still hear her out. The Amethyst Academy, the Hooded Lanterns, the Knights of the Silver Order, the Queen of Thieves, Queen Lenore, and Lucretia Matthias. And Dragon. I wish to raise one issue if you wish to speak. From yeah. the Academy. The Amethyst Academy can no longer abide the ex- the e- ign- or ignore this escalating situation here in Drakenheim, and we are prepared to offer our assistance. However, the Amethyst Academy has more secrets than you know truths, and we will not tolerate interrogation. We wish to discuss in good faith, but the confidentiality and the discretion of the Amethyst Academy is paramount. If you cannot accept these terms, we cannot offer our resources. I think we can meet you on that, but there are certain truths that might need to be shown light upon the amethyst academy will not be held to any form of magical compulsion and we will invoke the 13th edict of lumen in order to protect it that blade is to be sheathed during these discussions we will not allow it that makes discussing things difficult around pluto (laughs) There's the problem is Eldrick. <laughs> <laughs> the blade still has an essence about it. Oh, it does, but you keep that thing sheathed. It will and still well away from us. us. Or well Pluto's I'm gonna sure be going it will. crazy. <laughs> you keep that thing sheathed and well away. The Amethyst Academy does not consent to any form of magical interrogation, understood? If the blade causes Pluto Jackson to act, it is not Pluto Jackson, it is the blade. It's the blade. And under no circumstances will I tolerate you harming him in any way. I don't need to harm him to hold him back. Good. We can agree to that. As long as that is in He motions, and the the machine behind him just goes, Junk! (laughs) Junk! (laughs) Wait, that's not harming him? I'm going to have to... I have to fight that one day, am I? <laughs> You're gonna have to keep that sword in check, I think, if this is all gonna work out. But the sword was like our truth serum. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know how to navigate this. There's, this is already getting rocky. The too many cooks in the kitchen. There's very little that we can do. If he's gonna invoke the edicts of Lumen, then we are. The terms arranged between the church and the Amethyst Academy after the Inquis- Inquisition, if they're going to invoke them, we have to hold, we have to obey. Okay. I will reluctantly, and while making eye contact with Alina, put away the sword. And I'm glaring. Well, at least we I can... do not even know why you would want to talk to these mages. They have nothing. They know nothing of truth. And they just. They know nothing of what lies before. You marvel at their majesty and power, says Lucretia Matthias. But theirs is just of this world. It is nothing before faith. If I've learned anything about truth since I started this whole ordeal, 
is that truth is a matter of perspective. You have your truths, they have theirs. Truth is not a matter of perspective, young one. And you would do well to remember that there is one truth in this world, and that is the flame. It illuminates all and shows us the path forward. There is no subjectivity before the flame. There is no, There can be no doubt before it. Oh, cool, 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 neat, cool. You know, neat. Sounds good, Lucretia. So <laughs> glad you could make it to the party. Yeah, so happy you. We're so happy you're here. <laughs> Ran into us. Came knocking. That was sarcasm. <laughs> and to put away the blade. So... Can we agree to talk then about Drakenheim, about what's going on in this city, about what we're trying to do, and what each person thinks they deserve from it? There is no need to shed blood, says Lucretia Matthias. I hope not. Neither do I, but I won't hesitate if we have to. This is this this city, this city, and the sovereignty of Westermar will not be abandoned. While we have our queen, Lenore, and the results of the vault, we have the path forward. We can find the truth, even if it hides from us. My thoughts exactly. So, you three, are you going to moderate this little discussion of ours? That could be a good role for us. We, I think that the three of us are major players in this. We However, we have, been, too. we have been kind of, yeah, what Pluto <laughs> just said. We're, we're an unbiased party. We've met with each of you. You all have a lot to offer. Some of you scare me. I glance at Elena and Lucretia. But for the most part, there's something that each of us could bring to the table. I don't expect all of us to work together. But in order to save Drakenheim, we're going to need more than just the guard of the city. We're going to need people. And I think we need to know where your loyalties lie. I think if you haven't shown that by now, then, I mean, I feel like that's a little bit of a lost cause. No offense, says Elena. Good friends, your word is not worth too much. I mean, I knew you were going to betray me, and you did. I have to admit, I'm curious. Who are you in bed with, actually? And... Uh oh. Lucretia speaks up. Do you walk in shadow or do you walk in the light? Now that's that's a weird question to ask me. Shadow. Are you mercenary? Are you mercenaries? Cause you can be worth your purpose if you're that. If you want money, you want your own worth. But what separates an ally from an asset, that's loyalty. Where do we stand right now, Knight Commander? In this cathedral. To re-sanctify it after defeating the Lord of the Feast. After rallying the Silver Order and the Hooded Lanterns behind a single cause. We have came here. We went into the crypts, the three of us, to retrieve those bones. We found the Sword of Ignatius. If you're questioning whether or not what we're doing is good for the city of Drakenheim, then I'm wondering where your loyalties lie. Because I thought it was obvious that we were working together. Now, I must say, you three are brave. You're bold. You're smart, too. Smart enough. That can't be denied. <laughs> oh, oh! And we've shed blood together, spilt it too. Three of us, you three, 
Us, the Lord Commander, we make a pretty good team, I gotta say. But I also gotta say that this situation is spinning out of control. And here in this city, being in it, near this cathedral, we're hanging on by a thread in here. You know that. You, we, it took everything we had to get this far. And once Ophelia lights the flames here in the cathedral, it will be a bastion of light. But I look through the city, and the only hope I see is in flame. When and I'm glad I have that. When we started, when I started my journey with these two, it was about surviving. It was about just living and getting by. But through our journey, through our time together, through meeting all of the factions, I've realized that there's such a bigger purpose here than just living in a ruined city. There was a city that was beautiful and full of life and had so much purpose before this. And although a, a, a terrible accident destroyed what used to be, the potential here for that city, for that kind of place is still still at the end of the tunnel, the light at the end of the tunnel. But if we squabble and, and crawl over each other to get what we want, rather than just working together, that's what we're here to do, is try to bring some semblance of what it used to be with all the factions together. So if you ask where our loyalties lie, our loyalties are to Drakenheim. Bam. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks, Pluto. I can what about the agree. Caspian? Where do your loyalties really lie? Um, I mean, from my national anthem, it's always <laughs> Caspia. Um, that's just part of our thing. But in truth, I want to see Drakenheim restored. And it doesn't take a sword to tell me that I got to say it, even though the sword is literally screaming in my ear. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. I will bleed to my last drop, says the Lord Commander, if it means restoring the city. And if that's what you want, then I will work with you to do that. The night captain shakes his head. Friends. Lord Commander. Being in the city, I can tell you that I can sense the corruption hangs heavy over this city to its very core. You all know that. It's even gripped the noble crown of Westamar with respect. We have shed blood together in battle and I will draw swords with all you again. But there might be no end to the monsters here. I think we gotta burn the city to the ground. We can rebuild. We control the walls, we control the cathedral, we can set up flame breaks, we can preserve the sacred sites, we can preserve the castle, but I think we gotta burn every entry of this city to the ground. We got the materials, we can go, we can send a lumen and have more brought in, and we should burn every last building to the ground. There will be nowhere for monsters to hide, no more bandits to hide, they will have to face us in the open field. It will take advantage of all the advantages that we have, we can fight them like a real enemy. We can't be skulking around in the ruins of this city trying to look for things that are lost. We can rebuild it, but we're going to have to rebuild it. We can just burn the whole thing to the ground. That's not how you find the needle. You don't, you don't burn the haystack. You got to keep trying to find the needle, and it's going to get frustrating. But I don't think there is a needle to find. We just found some pretty big needles recently <laughs> down in the crypt. <laughs> Literally, there's needles everywhere. We have a potential to reclaim the throne of Drakenheim. Oh, yeah. And from there, it all branches outwards. Under one banner, the Drakenheim banner. Lord Commander, you're the remnants of the city guard. But you got to have something to guard. You don't want to be doing this forever. We need somebody in that throne. 
somebody in control. The three of us came to Drakenheim with our own motives. Some of us wanted to find family. Some of us wanted to learn truths, and <laughs> some of us um, also want to learn truths. Yeah, there's a, a lot, lot of, of truths, and there's this a lot is, of family. This is my but vacation. through through the time here, we've learned that together there can be change in this city. We can make a change, but we can't do it alone. So you're going to be the remnants of the city guard. Well, we're going to need more people than that. There used to be a tower here that the Amethyst Academy controlled. It's still kind of half there, too. It's, it's <laughs> mostly there. In order to restore this city, the Amethyst Academy is going to have to continue to work within these walls. Why? Because they can do good work. The Knights of the Silver Order... I don't know where they stand. They want to burn this whole city to the ground. Like we'd appreciate it if you didn't. And if that's the case, then why are we lighting the fire in this church? Why are we making this uh, this cathedral such a bastion of hope if your next move is to burn it to the ground? We're not going to need to burn the cathedral, but we'll have to raise everything else. Yeah, well, and honestly... You- If you want to rebuild, a city can be rebuilt. There aren't any people living here anymore. Oh, but there are. But there's so many. Ask Elena. There's a potions guy walking around. What's his name? Cornelius Mortimer Bigsby? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, He saw a light here, and he wanted to start his family. (laughs) What you do to make this city is of no consequence before the flame. There is no truth to be found in that castle or in that tower. Lucretia, there is some truth to be found here. Lucretia, you're the only one that I don't know what to do with. Yeah, you're definitely like... You show up here with all of your followers. And a bunch of people with crystals in their chest. Preaching the truth and the light. But you wouldn't let us in to learn about it unless we jammed a crystal in our chest. Which is absurd. That's like a... To demand that. If you want to be part of this, then you're going to have to tell us what you think is your truth. And we can decide if we agree or not. There is a great purpose coming for the flame. And my only wish is that all souls are ignited once more. We have been taught that it is only by our death that we join the flame. That is what these they will tell you. But it is not so. I say through life, may our souls be ignited once more. That is the truth. That is the truth that has been hidden from us. It is not by any deed, by any valiance, but by faith that we are reborn. And if you wish to have a new nation, one that cannot be built upon the truth of faith, is but a hollow shell. Your people spoke of an age of heroes, right? Well, got bad news for you, lady. You're looking at your heroes. (laughs) Not just us three. The Lord Commander, Petra, Ansem, the Knight Commander, Ophelia Reed. So many people in this room have risen up in the 15 years that this city has been crumbling and destroyed and infested with monsters. You spoke of a rise of the Age of Heroes. And what has happened in the last few months here in Drakenheim? Change. Change for the better. I do not see heroes before me. Maybe the time will tell and the flame will reveal. But now all I see are wretches squabbling over mortal affairs, unconcerned with the greater truth. It is like you all refuse to turn your eyes towards the light and are content 
to sink in the mud. You don't see any heroes, and I don't hear any truth. So unless you can present me with uh, better people to fix Drakenheim... She's a heretic. She's been excommunicated by the hierarch. She's just she's mad. Addled all the way through. You can look at her, see it. Whatever that corrupted that delirium is doing to her and the rest of them, it's totally making their minds go crazy. Honestly, we should run them out of the city. Well, I'm not going to argue with you on that one. There's, yeah. This is this is the one time I, I actually... I will argue that the Queen of Thieves has a seat at this table because she has a lot that she can bring. This lady, <laughs> Lucretia, the chosen one, or whatever she Miss claims Mathias, to be. I am no chosen one. I am only of course but a not. seeker of truth. All right. This Good. place... You may sanctify it again. I came to give it my blessing. That's... I feel like that's Ophelia's job. Yeah, I think we got it. Yeah. Yeah, we got the blessings covered. We're all full. Full Full-on blessings. Mm -hmm. Ophelia. You... She has always looked at truth through shades of south doubt she does not open her eyes she does not let her faith reveal to her the uh, what she knows to be true she tells you that this queen is a lost soul but none are beyond redemption and shelter in flame deeds do not make our light but I know what has happened to your queen and I know that she could not save her because that her faith is not strong enough Not even the darkest shadow can hold back the true light. I don't trust her for a second. It is something to think about, though. We've never really gone to her about I delirium in people. Go to her, but like just to wonder, like maybe she knows what to do with delirium. Well, in yeah, people. maybe she does. But I don't. <laughs> I don't want any more people following her. That's not the Drakenheim that I want to see, man. Ophelia. Or, sorry, Lucretia. Flame keepers, all the flame keepers. Lucretia, if you were to see a new Drakenheim, what would your followers bring to a new Drakenheim? Is this like one of those dating shows? Yeah. Contestant number one. It's like an interview. (laughs) You know nothing about the sacred stones. We carry them with us in our hearts. They do not harm us. Uh, you say that we don't know anything about the sacred stones. Amethyst Academy. Got anything to say about that? I have uh, these potions here that I've been drinking. I have this orb. Um, been a lot of other crazy contraptions. There's a lot of things going on with this uh, delirium uh, that seems a lot better suited than jamming it into my chest and hoping for the best. Indeed. What this woman says is utterly ridiculous. None have invested more resources in understanding what has happened here than the Animathist Academy. That falling star you claim is some beacon of light does come beyond the stars, but a darkness carries with it, ejected from a realm beyond mortal comprehension. As best as we can tell, delirium is the raw stuff of magic in physical form, nothing less than crystallized chaos. A far cry from truth and light. There is more to discover, to be sure. I don't know. That sounds like a reasonable, uh, logical path. Wouldn't you say, Lord Commander? (laughs) Just trying to to create ties, create bridges. (laughs) Bring them all Uh over there. Uh (laughs) You start walking up and, like, pushing them towards Uh each other. And he, the Lord Commander asks Eldrick, what what does he think? And Eldrick replies, Suffice to say, the Amethyst Academy has harnessed 
and developed the means to harness the incredible energies found in delirium. We shall use it to create unfathomable magical wonders on a scale hitherto undreamt of for the betterment and protection of all people. Only the Amethyst Academy has the knowledge to accomplish such a feat and the wisdom to temper the wild and destructive potential of this volatile resource. I think it's dangerous in the hands of people who don't know what they're doing with it. But I think it's valuable in the hands of people who do. And I look at the Queen of Thieves. She smiles. <laughs> um, and before she can speak, the, um, the, uh, the Knight Captain Theodore Marshall speaks up um, and he says, Lucretia, sorry, bad accent. Lucretia and her cult poison our very faith with their blasphemy in these sacred stones. But the Academy, they will sow the seeds of greater destruction. We must destroy it. We cannot allow it to be used. Every last single shard of that delirium has, it, it's got to be destroyed. We got to get rid of it. We, we can't allow these secretive mages to be doing whatever crazy experiments they want. We can't punish them for the trespass that they've done so far, but we can certainly deny them for further spoils to build implements of whatever chaos and destruction that they want to. Their abominable arcane ambitions know no bounds, and they are reckless with their experiments. The Amethyst Academy has done a lot of good for this world. Their improvements in magic, them opening up schools for those of us who develop powers, them teaching people to control and understand magic, the world would be a much darker place without the Amethyst Academy with their grip on the magical entities that this earth has to offer. So the fact that a new magical entity has presented itself I see no better person to handle it. Well, not person. No better organization to handle it than the ones who have always handled and always improved this land with their magic. The Amethyst Academy used to be a staple of Drakenheim. And what did they do for Drakenheim? They taught mages. They understood magic. They spread magic. They used magic to build a city that was beautiful, defendable, powerful. Protect it. They, they protected the they city helped. with magic. They helped when it was needed. I. They helped the royal family. Yeah. They were there. They were part of the <sighs> ecosystem. I don't want... I don't want to have my words mistaken. However... You all speak with this hope of restoring Drakenheim, but everything that we have learned so far, this city will never be, the, be born again. It will be a dead city. This is where we disagree. Yeah, it, this is... No, 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 no. This is where you are ignorant. This is where your hope is blinding you to what needs to be done to control this circumstance. This city is dead. It is a corpse. It is rotting. And it ha is sitting on top of the most chaotic and incredible magical resource the world has ever seen. It needs to be contained and studied and controlled. And if you, are, if you want to work with the Amethyst Academy, Lord Commander, you need to dispel this childish notion that this will ever be a living city again. I think we can find some middle ground here. <laughs> we'll get back to you. Now, we are prepared to assist with restoring the monarchy of Westermar. But you need to understand that there will never be a Drakenheim again. That's why we're going to call it New Drakenheim. Yeah, and it's going to be built kind of over top of the corpse that you You could build like it about a hundred miles away, maybe. Mm, what? But this city will never be a living city again. I want to hear what Eldrick thinks about that. Do you think... That's what Eldrick... Oh, that's that what Eldrick, Eldrick is saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought that was... Oh, I'm getting confused. Yeah, that that was Eldrick. <laughs> Eldrick, yeah. Eldrick wants to... So, uh, Eldrick from what is, I know, Eldrick wants to study, contain it, and basically make this like a giant like quarry for 
for uh, 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 delirium. The, delirium. That's the one. Escape me. Um, the other ones, the Silver Order, want to blow it all up. Um, the Hooded Lanterns want to restore Drakenheim. Mm -hmm. But both of those parties that you just mentioned think that it's a dead husk. Yep. Um, and I guess it's mostly just us that thinks we can... It's us on the Hooded Lanterns, and generally I now I'm kind of realizing I don't generally agree with the <laughs> Hooded Lanterns bullheaded idea that everything's going to be hunky-dory at the end of this for well, Drakenheim. Com um, Commander... Which um, one? <laughs> Lord Commander. <laughs> Lord Commander. We we want the same thing. We want Drakenheim to be restored, but I have to say that when we talk about restored, you, like it's not going to be back to the way it was. That's impossible. But your vision of what Drakenheim could be in the future is that it's under a, a, a head of the monarchy in a living city, correct? That's what I would have hoped. The castle, the city, it's the crossroads of the entire nation. There cannot be a nation without Drakenheim. So, between having some semblance, and I'm not saying all the semblance of what it used to be, a monarchy in this place the Silver Order is saying that there could be a livable place here if we tore it up and put it back down, relayed the tracks out. I mean, if you look at the houses in the certain districts, it makes a lot of sense for us to just gut it and rebuild. But It could take time. Then there's the problem of the delirium. With the delirium... As we've thought, you want to study it and, and quarantine it, but does it have to be the whole city, the entire city of Drakenheim that's quarantined and studied, or could we could we split up the the idea of this? And I turned to El uh, Elric. Is Elric. there is there a way that we could contain the meteor? Yeah, maybe there will come a time. One day, when we have extracted the delirium that is here, studied it for many, many years, and found out its true nature and purpose that we can determine that. But it will be years, if not longer, before we can actually determine what has been done. And until then, we need to get control of this city. <sighs> Mortal greed is insatiable. The outer wards of the city are crawling with scavengers. You broke the power of all those gnolls, which was impressive, but you've merely ensured that more brave fools will now venture deeper into the city. Who knows what horrors are still lurking in here, what horrors could get out. And at the very least, it will be a battleground for prospectors and treasure hunters. There's all manner of would-be mages, people that, we've, that don't work with the academy that still study magic, or people that are just interested in selling it back to us that want to be crawling all over this place there will be no less anarchy than there was before until we are able to reclaim the tower and project the full power of the amethyst academy we are willing to do this we can do this we can work together to do this but you must understand that it will mean there is no Drakenheim for many, many years at the very least, if at all. We cannot promise that. We can promise that the ruins will be something, Lord Commander, that you and your men could scour through. We may be able to get access to the castle again, find the records of the, lo the royal family, and you may be able to restore the monarchy of Westermar. Something might be possible. Who knows what magical wonders we may yet build. This could be the foundation of something truly wonderful. So what you're saying is, even though, of course, we're not expecting it at the snap of a finger, but there's potential if we work together with the Anabist Academy that this place could be 
a, a place of prosperity in many years from now. Maybe not in our lifetime. A place of prosperity, absolutely. The world could be a place of prosperity. The promise of what the power of delirium offers us is incredible. Well, we have to start somewhere. I'm, I'm willing to agree with that sentiment. I, th I think that the Amethyst Academy and the Hooded Lanterns and the Silver Order all have a place in restoring Drakenheim. It just feels like sometimes, Lord Commander, power corrupts. Sorry, I got my access messed up. That uh, The knight captain says, Lord Commander, power corrupts. If you're going to let these mages have the carte blanche to do what they will with this delirium, it's going to be a disaster. It's only a matter of time before they do something truly awful with it. I know it. I know it in my heart. You don't know, know it. it. That's an faith. assumption. You're assuming. You're making wild accusations about the Amethyst Academy. What has the Amethyst Academy ever done to the Silver Order? Do you not have a tower in Illyria? Our faith. Our faith still remembers those dark days. Years ago of the Sorcerer Kings that kept people in bondage, turned people into slaves. When we let magic rule the world, it makes slaves of everyone that doesn't have the gift of it. And it'll only be a matter of time. If the Amethyst Academy has this kind of power, <laughs> yeah. Now, they'll, they'll say they're doing it for the better of everyone, but they're only going to make it a better world for people that are born with the gift of sorcery and magic. No, at least you'll get by. Well, you know what I think is going to happen, Knight Commander? I think we need somebody who can, can who can control the magic. Otherwise, it's going to run rampant. And you are blaming the current Amethyst Academy for mistakes that you say happened ages ago. I'm a spellcaster. My goal, when this is all said and done in a new Drakenheim is to stop the ridicule of young spellcasters and give them a place where they can hopefully learn to harness their power and understand and use it to better the world. The reason I came back to Drakenheim, the reason why I'm here, the reason why I'm doing all of this is because I just want to do something good with my powers because I'm sick of people telling me that everything that I touch is an incident, is a disaster. I, I ruin everything. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a little sick of that mentality of mages are just going to destroy everything and only fend for themselves. Well, Knight Commander, I represent that. And I'm here to make that change. And I think some of the members of Amethyst Academy, and I look at River when I say this, want to better the world with magic and I think we could aim for that of course we do I'm I'm sorry my friends we Sebastian you you three are good but I don't trust the Amethyst Academy I don't and I can't and if you're gonna give them the free reign to do it then I'm sorry but I don't know how we can work together I can't I can't abide that I can't abide the, the, the chance for this to go out of control everything's already out of control if we try to act individually and not work together it's going to stay out of control, regardless no, if you wanted to burn the city down. It's going to be in their control. They're going to want to call all the shots. They're going to want to just take over the entire situation. They're, they'll take over. They will. They Thank Commander, you have a bad habit of putting words in other people's mouths. I'm starting to see that right now. You keep saying things that they're going to do, that you're sure that they are going to do. Meanwhile, we have one of the leaders of the Amethyst Academy, or at least 
the leader of what used to be Drakenheim's Amethyst Academy, standing here saying that he plans to do the opposite. And I've known this man most of my life. He taught me. He raised me. He is like a second father to me. So if you're saying that he and the people he represents are going to do wrong by the city, then you are saying that I am going to do wrong by the city. Although I may not be an active member of the Amethyst Academy, I am from them. I was molded by them. And I have done nothing but help you. I think as well, under the guidance of a true monarch, the Amethyst Academy would not have this full free reign that you're implying. The Amethyst Academy has to bow to the people in charge. We are prepared to make a deal about that, says Elder. I think there was already a deal made, was there not? I think that there might be a contractual contract (laughs) obligation saying that you serve the city of Drakenheim. We're prepared to honor that. Provided that we in order to do so, we will need to retake the ca- the the tower. Oh, that that's... is on my to-do list. Yeah, we're already <laughs> added it to the list. It is high on the list. It yeah, is actually it's the up next there. thing. Yeah, it's been on the list on my list. Time. So if that's all, I mean, to be honest, like we, that partnership's already been created and connected. We just need to find the true heir. What if, Knight Commander? We put a monarch back in the throne of Westamar. The Amethyst Academy, there's papers that can be signed. There are things that can be done to ensure that they bend the knee to that monarch. I don't know what you think a piece of paper is as a shield against a bunch of wizards. Knight Commander, this whole battle against the Knolls was for a piece of paper. We did it. The power of a piece of paper is incredible. And this man right here has just stated that he will honor that. Why do you deny him? You know what? If you want to dig your own grave, you can be my guest, but I don't I'm not going to have any part of that. I'm not going to have any part of you letting this this wretched, corrupt substance usher in some kind of new world order. The way I see it, you got a bunch of mad scientists on one hand and a bunch of crazy kooks on the other. And I think that neither of them know anything that they say that they do about this delirium and it's best destroyed. And that is the word of the hierarch. So what you're saying is, you will not bow to the new monarchs and their wishes for what this new city could be. If they say that the Amethyst Academy is part of this new Drakenheim. Veo, we're subjects of Illyria and soldiers of the Church of the Sacred Fire. We are not her subjects, and we are not subjects of Westermar. We are not citizens. I'm telling you for the good of this world that you cannot let them have control over over this. And if you're going to do that, then I'm sorry, Lord Commander, but the next time we see each other, we might be on the other side of the battlefield. I think... If you're not with us to create a better Drakenheim, then maybe you need to go back to where you came from, where you're building your own city, your own place. Because you don't have a place here if you're not going to help build it towards a better Drakenheim. And what everybody agrees is a better Drakenheim, not just your own faith that blinds you. Feels like we're about to draw a line here, Knight Commander. 
And you're about to choose what side of that line you are on. And we're this, on this side. This city used to have... Everybody. Are you going to literally draw a line? Yeah, I'm drawing a line with uh, the end of my spear. He draws a line. For emphasis. On one hand, we have the people who want to rebuild a new Drakenheim. Not necessarily in this exact location. <laughs> Building a new Drakenheim means... Gaining the knowledge of what occurred here, understanding the delirium, the connection that it all has, researching it. I trust nobody more than the people who excel in magic to handle magic. I represent a part of that as somebody who uses magic. We are going to need a city guard. And Knight Commander, you have been a trusted friend on the battlefield and off the battlefield. You have shown us kindness that not many people have shown us along the way. I consider you my friends, and it breaks my heart to see my friends making such a terrible decision. Terrible in your opinion. This is a mistake. It's a mistake, friends. Don't turn the city over to the Amethyst Academy. We're turning They're it no over. more trustworthy than her. And he points to Elena. I look at Elena. Elena, you've been quiet. What's your <laughs> position on all this? I love this. This is... Listen. You guys are all free to decide whatever you want to do with this kingdom and this city. But I'm going to get my piece first, and you can fight over the scraps afterwards. What's your piece? I must confess, before the revered mothers of our faith, that my desires are not that pure. I am a base woman, and I'm only interested in the asking price. So, don't you worry. Once I've taken my spoils, all you little wolves here can fight over the scraps. But... Speaking of taking some spoils, I think you should know a few things first. I was hoping, well, not hoping, planning, you did some excellent work in recovering this cathedral and that little trinket that Ophelia has over there that flamekeeper's phylactery I'd like that and while I'm at it Lord Commander I'd like your badge too and I think it's in your best interest if you give those both to me right now <laughs> whoa 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 <laughs> And then I'll be on my way. And you guys can work out whatever whatever you want to fight over afterwards. That's that's totally fine. Um, you you just sh should know, you know, before yeah. you want to work with the Lord Commander as well. Did you go through all the paperwork down there in that vault? A lot of it. A lot of it. We skimmed. I mean, I would love to go through it with you. What did we miss? I don't know. But, um... I'm trying to get a read. You uh, you know about all the other Von Kessels, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know that he's the mad dog that killed half the Von Kessels during the Civil War. Say what? We've all done some things. <laughs> but why? Why would he? Did you tell them, Lord Commander? Why would you murder the royal family? He switched sides. When the king's brothers couldn't agree over who was going to have the crown. He fought for one, then fought for the other, and when they both end up dead, now he's here because he's got no other wars to fight. So, before you put all your faith in that guy, you just might want to think about all the betrayals and the blood he has behind him. I would like your seal... Lord Commander and Miss Ophelia 
you can turn over that as well to me now. We're, we're not going to do that. What? No, you really should consider my offer. I've got a really, really tantalizing price. It is the bargain of a lifetime. In fact, it is a lifetime bargain. No. <laughs> um. No. No! <laughs> I fall to my knees. No! I think... No! 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 I think the time now, to be honest. Eldrick? Eldrick? <laughs> you know that thing that you gave us a while ago? It was in a box and it had a key. When we were apprehended by the Queen of Thieves, she didn't give it back. And so she has it. What? We failed at a mission, and we were stripped of our personal belongings. And we didn't tell you because we thought you'd be mad, like you are right now. <laughs> yeah. And she is using it over our heads. That's why she said that we were working with her. It's really not. She's more threatening us than anything. And has our stuff. Yeah, and the whole... She like, has it. It. Yes. Both of the it's. Technically speaking, we never got to test it, so we don't know if it works. Well, I am pretty sure it works. She touches her nose. Yeah. It's a shame I can't be here in person, but I figured that this was the safest way to deliver it. Yeah. Elena. <laughs> or whatever your name is. So is I was just about to make a stand for you. Then you had to go and prove that you are the villain here. I mean, I'm totally happy to continue our working relationship. You three, by calling me out today, totally proved your capabilities. And I'm impressed. You betrayed me. You called me out. You thought you had me as captive. You thought you had all control over the situation. And not once did it occur to you that maybe you weren't holding all the cards. So... I'm offering you a deal here. And in fact, you're not even the ones that are holding the price. The onus is on you, Ophelia Reed, and you, Lord Commander, to turn those over to me. And then you are all free to go. And you can work out whatever disagreements you might have. And while I'm here... I think I'd also like all the gold in the vault. That would be really, really great. You've got a little fancy bag, don't you, that you can shove it in? I'll take that, too. I'll get. I'll give that back to you, but that would be the best way to get it all out of here. Th no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd Do we have beg a choice? you to reconsider. Well, to be honest... I mean, they have a choice. I'm gonna look at Eldrick and see if his if he's giving the the sign. Like the as, as as you do, the the Lord Commander speaks up. I did what I had to do for my nation. Those two, neither of them would have made it. Neither of them would have been the right. I did what I had to do for Westamar. And I will not turn over. But what is she talking about? About this? Why? She's got nothing. What is she threatening us with? She has everything. Eldra, can you explain uh, to the Lord Commander what the box that the Queen that, of Thieves took you from guys, us that might you guys gave do? Us, that you made? No. Oh, man. <laughs> now that's, that's, that's not going to go over well. Oh, God. I thought we were making such progress. Eldrick? <laughs> the help, help so. Perhaps it will take a further disaster for you to truly understand the gravity of what has happened here and the potential of delirium and why the Academy is the only ones who can safeguard it as a resource. Its destructive potential is truly unfathomable. And the Academy has created several weapons which prove this. 
that one has fallen out of our control was not unforeseen. But under such circumstances, it is highly regrettable. Lord Commander, I don't have any quarrel with you and what you did during the war, but you better give this woman that seal, or we are all going to die. And that's where we're going to take our break. <sighs> and we are back from our break. Yeah. Uh, off the top, a big shout out to Tabletop Audio for all of their uh, ambient music, uh, whether it's uh, in our dungeons or out looking at the gross Drakenheim sky <laughs> full of <laughs> rain. Uh, and they really, <laughs> they really know how to set the tone. So check it out, tabletopaudio.com. It's all free and it's all there for you. Be sure to visit our merch store at the links below where you can find all our uh, amazing t-shirt designs like Dragon Force. If you want to rep the team, um, visit the links below or bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. If you are enjoying the stream and you'd like to support our work, you can check us out on Patreon. You can find that by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusively for our patrons. So if you do join the Patreon, make sure to join us in Discord where you can chat with us about all things Drakenheim, all things D&D, and just chat with us about whatever you feel like. We talk about what we had for dinner <laughs> and cats and Pizza. cats and uh, many other things so join us there this week's episode of dungeons of drakenheim has been sponsored by our great friends at dimension 20 brandon lee mulligan and a team of veteran college humor comedians are back for season three of their DD live play series the unsleeping city if you love exploring the dark mysterious underbelly of fantastic fantasy cities and I know you do because you're listening to this campaign, you should really check out their first few episodes on the Dimension 20 YouTube channel. Um, I really like what they've done with this creepy fantasy New York. And I don't know if... I always look for other DMs who are really good, who have really good description and are really good at setting the scene. And Brennan does a really, really good job of that. So I was really listening a lot to be like, oh yeah, I should think about how like the wind sounds through the city street, <laughs> things like that. So I really like their descriptive style. It's really, really funny. Uh, they've really got a pro game. So check them out at dropout.tv. You can watch the full series there by subscribing and you can use the discount code uh, roll 50 to get 50% off your first month. The links in the description below for more info. With that, let us return to the ruins. Elena speaks. So, it's really quite cut and dry. You can all work out your little issues with one another. Just hand over the gold and the badges and you all get to live. Sound like a deal? No. <laughs> but what happens if we don't? Well, then you die. Die how? Tell me in, in detail. <laughs> Painstaking detail. Eldrick, would you like to explain what happens? Well, um, a zone of wild magic is unleashed, disrupting all magic in the area and sending a cascading blast of the haze and delirium-based magic, rapidly expanding through the area, leaving a vicious area of lingering magic and deadly arcane energy. Uh, which causes intermittent pulses of arcane power and very rapidly kills most living creatures in the area. Eldrick, what, what effect would that sort of thing have on, let's say, the garments we're wearing or gold that we're carrying? Uh, not much. It would have the same effect as if you walked into the crater. So the gold in the it items essentially local. It essentially releases the energy that was released 
in the immediate aftermath of the meteor falling, but in a less concussive form. It was developed as a means of clearing out enemy fortifications so that they could be reused. So, if she were to use that weapon on us, how does she get the gold and the badges? I know, and I suppose she does as well. She must have a friend of some kind. If she knows this, undead creatures can survive in the haze. Well, we know somebody who makes undead, don't we? What? Maybe it sticks. Maybe sticks is going to come back. I was thinking more maybe she's working with Oscar. Well, that would be terrible. I Um, have an eye for talent. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. Well, we played our card. (laughs) If... (laughs) If <laughs> what do I do, Ignatius? If we give them, how how can we give them to you? Because you're not really here. No, I'm not. Elena will bring them to me. And you'd best not follow. What if we don't allow Elena to go? Well, then you die. What if we take Elena with us? Then you better run as fast as you can, because from what I understand about what this device does, you have seconds to get out of here before you're dead. Luckily, I can run really fast in a couple of seconds. Yeah, but I can't. I can't. Hold on. I can't. (laughs) Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Veo. If I run too fast, I trip. Veo, I know you've lived for 15 years as a survivor in this city by being fast and stealthy, but um, I can be stealthy, but I can't be very fast. And Pluto cannot be either. Oh. And I'm not leaving him behind. What if we bring you the badges? No. Oh, man. What if we destroy the badges? I'm not giving you terms to negotiate. I am telling you what your choice is. Follow my orders or die. Veo, I think we're out of options here. Well, this isn't up to us. This is up to... Veo? There's going to be another way into the castle. The Lord Commander. There's got to be another way into the castle. I know there has to be. Lord Commander? Don't worry, Veo. We'll have plenty of future opportunities to collaborate. It's not like you'll never get into the castle. And she winks. <laughs> she winks at you. Lord Commander, I'm sorry. I don't know if there's any other options right now. And I don't think we want everybody in this room dead. This was never a situation that I imagined us being in. This was forced upon us. I say she does it. We will see. The flame and our faith will protect us. Oh, sh- yeah, shut no up, No one Lucretia. listen to her. No one. You are not the hostage negotiator. <laughs> I have no fear of what she may do by corrupting the stones with her profane magics. I say we execute that one. Yeah, you can have the badges and you can have her. We still don't want to turn her into a martyr. Right. Oh, yeah, we got our destroyer. <laughs> Do what you will. The castle is of no concern to us. We care not for it. It is not... It is a corpse perching above a city. But the truth and the light is already here, surrounding us in this whole city. Lord Commander, I think you have to give your badge. Uh, Flamekeeper, 
Um, can you do the ritual without it? Without you? I can try. I... I will... It's not necessary to have this trinket to bless this place. We don't... It's none of our concern what the... What you want to do with the castle is nothing to do with the Silver Order. What you want to do with Westermar is not our concern. We're only care, we only care about these holy places, and we can't allow this holy place to be defiled by that ravages of that terrible sorcery. And the night captain speaks up. And of course, my point is proven already. You want to turn the city over to this Amethyst Academy who's going to make weapons like this? You think that anybody is going to be care about any authority of any nation or people when they can make weapons like this? You want to give them the keys to the castle, the carte blanche, to do whatever you want when they can make a weapon like this? Lord Commander, I don't think we got much of an option with regards to this Queen of Thieves. I think you got to give it up. But... I rest my case. Those mages got no right to do anything in the city. They've already they've already made their mistake. Fact of the matter that they even gave it to these three. That was should tell you everything you need to know about where their intentions yeah, are. Yeah, they should have known better. To be fair, um, we encouraged a lot of faith in us going into the Queen of Thieves' lair. Um, we didn't expect to almost get eaten by a monster. It was... I, uh, we almost died. <laughs> we almost you died know, a lot for this city. Show us I know you fought feet. hard. But... You three... The Lord Commander said it. If there's any other bigger loose cannon around here than, than you three, it's her. And she's got all the, she's got all the game in this right now. Yeah, that's why that's why she's a problem. That's why we have a queen problem. <laughs> we have too many queens in the kitchen. So that's a saying, right? <laughs> um We do, says Queen Lenore. I cannot believe that my city, my people are being held hostage by you. You are a vile woman. So, you can all see that there's a problem here. I'm wondering if we can put the feuding on hold for a moment and focus on this bigger enemy. She's obviously an issue. She's obviously got her hands around Drakenheim more than any of you realized. I think we need to give her the badges, but I think this may be a way that before we can reach a better Drakenheim, you're right, we do need to burn the evil out of the city and I think it starts with getting rid of her and turn to the point to the Queen of Thieves. I'm inclined to agree, says the Knight Captain. And frankly, I think Lord Commander, you did what you had to do during a war and I don't I don't like the sounds of what you had to do. But I have to say, it's clear to me that this Queen of Thieves this Amethyst Academy and, and we had a good thing going. Us, the Lord Commander, working together, doing the right thing. Let's get them out of here. Let's get those am th those mages out of here. Oh, I didn't say that. I said the Queen of Thieves. <laughs> <laughs> They're both part of the problem. I think we should If it wasn't for them meddling around with magic that they should have been, she wouldn't have the card that she's holding. She's, as long as they're in play, she's going to find more ways to manipulate us, to find more ways to work around us. I think we should give her the badges, let her leave, and then we'll continue our discussion. Claire and present is the Queen of Thieves. Although, Queen of Thieves, what's stopping you from just blowing us up after we hand you everything? You'll just have to trust me. 
Oh, but we don't. So now, now we're at a checkmate here. <laughs> or a stalemate. 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 Um, we're not. not we didn't play a lot of chess. We. Yeah, I learned chess. You're more of a checkers guy. I. Yeah. <laughs> it's stalemate, right? Uno. Let me put it this way. Uno. You played your cards. You lost this round. But I like playing with you, and maybe we'll see you at the gambling table next time. Hopefully, then you have a few more, learn a few more lessons, and know how to play your cards a little bit closer to your chests. I've never been really good at poker. Mainly, I just, if I lose, I smash the other person in the face with my bow. So, yes, you may have won this round. But let's get on with it. Because next time, you may not see the hand we're going to play. Ophelia, can we give her the badge? For the safety of everyone in this room. And those outside of it to a certain radius. <laughs> you do say the only place you care we about in the to. city is this place, so you should probably just get rid We need to comply with this terrorist. Thank you. You see what we've been doing this whole time? This is what happens. <laughs> Commander, like... Every time our, we try to pick us up. Our, our arms just keeps getting <laughs> twisted. And we have to put up with this. We don't like to. She may say we're working we were with her, but we haven't. We were collecting bones. We were out on a bone collecting mission, and then... We were bone collectors. <laughs> we were just having a Elias, good day. Elias, Drexel, says the Queen Lenore. Give him... Give her your badge. It is not your command. It is not the symbol of your command, but we will discuss what you did to my family. Oh, yeah, we keep glossing over that. Mm. It seems like it haunts him. So be it, says Queen Lenore. Okay. And the Lord Commander takes his badge and he throws it on the ground. And Ophelia Reed walks out in front of Elena, drops the phylactery, and walks away. And Elena picks them both up. And the, the gold? I have all my stuff in this bag. You can empty it out. I don't need anything else but the gold. Just go down there. You can take those two. She points to two of the burlier hooded lanterns. Take those two down there. Empty no, it. Uh, I'll help. I don't think you understand. All my stuff is in this bag. Like, Yeah, well, you know, if you want to do it privately, you can empty it out downstairs. <sighs> I start, like, reaching in. I'm pulling out, like, bags of gold and gems. <laughs> there's and, probably like, some animals in there. There's, like, yeah, there's, like, a cat for some reason. <laughs> um, I don't... It's, it's alive somehow. Um, books and, like... <laughs> Various potion bottles and scrolls, and it takes like a good. Do you 15. have an organization? To <laughs> yeah, when you open it up, it's always like it's like a shelf, and yeah. I reach in and I pull what I need off the shelf. Um, it takes about fifteen minutes of me pulling. She things taps in her foot, waiting, and, and like it's setting just a pile them up. I'm stuff. like organizing them. I'm like, okay, this one is for the potion making. This is my reading material. Hurry uh, up! You asked for the bag. <sighs> Do you want it? Uh, four bottles of wine. <laughs> no, leave the wine. <laughs> hey. I... I'll give you two. Mm. Oh, all the bottles of wine go back. There you go. Oh, wait. I'm supposed to go get it. Guys, I can't carry this all. I'll help you. Okay. You got it. You're able to load up the gold in the bag. <sighs> Is this all the gold we found downstairs? Yeah. That we didn't steal because we were good bullion. people? Yeah. Do most of it. <laughs> <laughs> one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. <laughs> I go back and I throw her the bag. 
thanks. Good job. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Thank you. You are by far my best employees. No, we're not. And no, she we're reaches free. into the bag, pulls out a gold bar, and throws one at each of you. Yes. Don't spend it all in one place. Is it in front or of how everyone? Much? How yeah. much does it work? Oh, uh, well. <laughs> I have to keep up appearances and I can't take it, but this is really mean. I definitely take it. <laughs> There's no way I'm taking this and I slide it in with my stuff. <laughs> How did that get there? I'm just like, oh, I'm not going to waste it. How much is it? Um, it's it's a solid gold bar uh, worth 50 gold pieces. Oh, sweet. And she, uh, she replies, I'm going to be on my way. And as soon as... And I better not be followed. And if I am, we're going to have a problem. Okay. Is that clear? Yep. Before she leaves, she feels an invisible poke in her eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my eye. What was that? <laughs> I don't know. That was weird. It must have been the, must have been the, the church it's fighting back against tyranny. Oh, and as Elena's going to go, and then she's going to come back and I will release her. Can you bring my bag back? I have a lot of stuff here. Mm. You said you, you were going you to. said. Are we going to trust you or not? I'll, I'll give it back, but next time. You have to carry all that <laughs> stuff now. <laughs> Do you need to put some stuff in my backpack? I don't even. There, there's. Look at this pile of stuff. Gosh. Oh. And with that, Elena leaves. Bye, Elena. Ugh. Ugh. Sebastian sits on the steps. And I just turn to the rest of them. I say, see? See what we have to deal with? We've got conniving people crawling over themselves for power in the city based on what they believe in. And none of you are working together and she's getting the better of us. Knight Commander, Lord Commander... Amethyst Academy. And for a small little bit, Lucretia Matthias. I don't even know. But before we decide who's on what side and who wants what for Drakenheim, I think we all have a major issue that we need to take care of. And that is that we need to get rid of the Queen of Thieves. It's one thing trying to figure out how all of us fit into this city, but with her on the loose, it's just too... It's too wild. It's too risky. Yeah. we If we can come together and deal with her, it might be easier to figure her out. Her lies and deception are nothing before the flame. Thank you, Lucretia. Obviously, there's something because... <laughs> yeah, you can wait outside. <laughs> Yeah, can, Le- you can, can you wait outside, Lucretia? We have lost nothing zombies. that is of any value. She has only taken gold. What is gold but corruption? What are those symbols are but of a way that has long gone? What about my bag? <laughs> it, it is but a, a trifle. All my stuff. The bag. She uh, is your the- attachment to those material things weighs down your very soul. I, I need these. That's what I've been telling them for like months. <laughs> it's it's not about what she did and what she took. It's about what she embodies. And that is pure lies and darkness. And if you believed anything that you were saying, you would help us defeat her and get rid of her. So that way, even any light could shine because she's only going to envelop this place in darkness. Veo, I don't know if I'm ever going to stand on the same side well, as her. Well, you, you speak of deeds and speak of action, but your actions and your deeds have no faith. And while you have no faith, you cannot stand up against the darkness that she represents. It is not by your actions that your faith is revealed. Faith comes first. And then when you are a vessel for truth and the flame, that is when you will find justice. But until then, your actions cloud you with darkness. You will never defeat her unless you can truly give your faith to the light it's not my actions I'm concerned about it's yours and your followers that do nothing nothing to do anything about her darkness 
Her darkness, the darkness can do nothing against the light. But she is. She is doing things. She is corrupting those around her. She did. She can only corrupt those who allow themselves to turn away to, from the light. And yes, while we must resist those who turn them away from the light, the true message will be heard. She has not harmed me. She has certainly preyed upon my followers, those who have tried to make the sacred pilgrimage. She has stolen sacred stones from us. But these are but passing tribulations and the sloughing off of our own mortality. At her core, she is nothing but a shadow. And what if she tends to impede the greatest light in the city? The crater. What if she intends to put out all of the lights, all of the delirium in and what she's she doing? she will fail. I think you don't give her enough credit. I think you give her too much. Lord Commander, Knight Commander, you guys willing to help us stomp some evil? Some true evil? I don't think any of us can move forward with this going on. She is... Now that she's gathering the badges, she has something in mind. You three, you have my hammer. But... You need to understand that the Amethyst Academy is only going to make this situation worse. They're just as bad as she is. I'm not going to have you be blind. If you want to be blinded and you don't want to see that there's two snakes coiling around this city and you want to tolerate one just because the other one just bit you, you got to rip them both off. You got to get rid of them both. No, I've heard snakes that can make really good pets if you can teach them not to bite. I'm inclined to agree. Sebastian. Let's not be naive, and you should be honest with this, man. The Amethyst Academy will be no one's pet. Understand? Yep. Just trying to help you make an alliance here, but sure. If you're going to cat, I want to make sure. Certainly. Night Captain. The Amethyst Academy and the church have had many disagreements. Many, many over the centuries. And If there will be anima, and if there is animosity from their leader, there will be animosity from every single one of them. They will not fall in line. I don't. They never change. Somebody has to change. Somebody has to change. Or else there will be no change going forward, and you all die in this forsaken city. I'm with. I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, but it doesn't seem like he is willing to extend the same thing to us. And I... And if he wants to go around destroying the most valuable resource this city has, then he... <laughs> we've got nothing to discuss. I also think that maybe we should put Project Explosive Delirium on hold for a while. <laughs> Just throwing like, that out there. Like, just, just, um... It's, so far, it's done nothing good for anybody. Like, having the weapons out there seems to have a... Just the fact that they're around. I can't believe you that you don't think that that should be punished alone. That that act of even making that kind of weapon can even stand can even hold a candle to anything. So do you think that everyone should be punished for every wrongdoing that they do? Should the commander be punished for what he did during war? 
You know, I don't know that yet, but I, I do know one thing. Weapons like that have no place in this world. They can only murder and kill. And those kind of things, if they're gonna, if those are the kind of things that this Amethyst Academy does, let's be done with them now. We don't need them to retake the city. We can do it. We can commit our resources. We can get more support from the Hierarch. We can bring more forces in here. And we can start burning down the city and take it anew. We don't need to take back yeah, their tower. Like they're going to have us doing this whole song and dance, going up their tower, doing all these things. I'm going up that tower. And here you are talking about, oh, they're making weapons, and how can we let that happen? Uh, I'm sure the people who forged the first swords, there were people saying, why would you do this? This is just something to be used for war. Dwarven artillery, and those machines that they can make. You use them. You also, you, don't you have flamethrowers? Yeah. And, well, and Ophelia speaks up. The dwarves, they destroyed themselves with their weapons. They put plagues upon the world with what they did, with their arcane science. They brought the downfall of their own empire in the days before the first pal paladin. Do you think that it will be any different with this academy? What about you and your flame and fire and the weapons you've created? Should, should you be judged for those? For testing the power of the flame? Now, they're not nearly on the same order of magnitude. No, but it's testing and pushing the boundaries. Is I, that not what we've always done, all of us? I feel like we're losing focus on what's important. We have a rogue terrorist. With a bomb. She has a very powerful bomb. And she has in her possession many items required by the keepers of the city. Why we're not putting aside our petty differences and dealing with this. We're not going to have a Drakenheim if we keep letting her run rampant. That everything, everything we want, whether we want to scorch it or raise it to the ground or clear out all the monsters, whatever we want to do, none of that's going to happen while she's on the loose. None of that can happen. And before we all look at that problem together, then we might as well just leave and go our separate ways and let her just keep running the show. I think everybody, everybody's efforts are required in order to do it because she is a, a foe that has power that you didn't see. It slipped right under your noses when she was doing it underground. And she's going to continue to do it. She's going to continue to infiltrate your people and bring them towards what she wants to be a Drakenheim, which is no queens, no kings, just thieves running rampant through the streets doing what they want. Is that what you want to fight against? To bring light? To bring order? I turn that to the commander. You've had problems with her this whole time, but you never knew to the extent in which you had this problem. If there's anything I can say for the move that we made by bringing the light on the Queen of Thieves is that now at least everybody in this room is aware of what she's capable of. And I hope that that's enough for you two commanders and you, Eldrick, to just set this disagreement aside for a moment because otherwise we could all die and we could lose a lot more. Because that bomb does not have alliances. Also, why are we hanging out in the spot where the bomb was said to be? To be honest, she could eat, not even have it. She could just be bluffing. Uh, I think like we, we have, that's the thing. We have to, we have to break her cycle of power. I think if we weren't here, then she would blow it up. But we're very valuable to her. Because we kind of <laughs> keep helping her perpetuate. Because we're under her thumb. And we want out from under her thumb. We want to get and out of this we can't contract. do it alone. And she had a mole in the Hooded Lanterns. Yep. She's been taking people from the Silver Order. 
And I'm sure she's done something wrong to the Amethyst Academy. I don't know. Like, you guys Let's name look it. back. Yeah, she she's probably got one. I mean, yeah, she stole your bomb. She stole your bomb. She's giving and, you a bad name. And I know that that probably sounds like it was my fault, but there was there was a giant monster. We were not prepared. We were sent into the Queen of Thieves' lair on a mission without proper knowledge of how powerful Yeah, and if you had have told me that you had that kind of weapon, we could have protected it. Yeah, but the Amethyst Academy told us not to. It was a, <laughs> it was a difficult time. We're here Those now. Are past us. This okay. is future. This is now us. This, yeah, let's let's talk about now us. All right, forget forget that conversation. Don't worry about it. It's unfortunately that's the hand that we've been dealt. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't look at the messengers of the tragedy. Look at the perpetuators. Look, what's done is done, but we got to get those badges back. There is one thing that we need to reconcile before we even enter into the, any consideration of an agreement. We are we will work with a silver order. But in order for the academy, in order for me to go to the council and present our alliance that we will leverage the assets of the academy the council needs the assurance that we will have access to the delirium in Drakenheim. If we do not have that assurance, you will not have the aid of the Amethyst Academy. Okay, two things. Two things that come up for me there. Number one, I think really it's not our authority to give you that access. It is the rightful ruler of Drakenheim to be able to give you that access. And number two, technically, the Amethyst Academy already owes their services to that ruler. Regardless of what you want from the situation or not. And I have a piece of paper to prove it. No, 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 no. And you can produce that. And Eldrick will correct you and say, this paper guarantees the services of the Amethyst Academy in order to solve a crisis of succession. This does not assure the allegiance of the Amethyst Academy in retaking the city, and it is also furthermore contingent on the Amethyst Academy's access to the end lease on the grounds of the Academy of Tower, which is currently in the possession of no one. Really? You really? We have to go get it. Oh. Thus, in order for this agreement <laughs> I mean, we to can be do that, yeah. valid the city of Drakenheim must be able to furnish the tower to the academy. And once that is done, we will honor the agreement and the payment that has been made, and we will aid in the finding of any heirs. I mean, speaking of heirs. Long, beautiful heir, shining. That said... No, <laughs> no, distracting. No, the academy no, no. can provide some advanced information regarding that search in the good interests of our collaboration. How about this? <laughs> but we need the assurance of knowing that we, because if not, we will go elsewhere. We will find others to collaborate with. And we will do what we need to do to ensure the supply of delirium. And you do realize that by saying that, that means the Knight Commander is not going to agree. So. Exactly. So, I mean, we won't stop you from getting delirium. But we will. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how you can let that rest on your conscience. I don't know how you can allow them to get their hands on a shred of this. With what they can do. You know, you guys are the worst. <laughs> you are the worst kinds of people. We almost just got blown up. We, we did because of a bomb they made. Yeah. And we need to take care of that. And nobody's willing to help. So I guess it's up to us to save the day again. Because you and your petty squabbles... And your stupid rules 
can't agree to come together over a reasonable cause. You want to make our own faction? We are our own faction. Yeah. And we're, we're better. And we don't. We've been trying this whole time to work with all of you without disagreances. We're trying to run that little fine line of everything that you guys want. You guys never asked us, like, if you could help us. It's always us helping you. It's always what you want, what you have to do, your rules. We've been doing everything. Queen Lenore speaks up. This is correct. You have done fantastic things. Lord Commander, you have served Drakenheim well. <laughs> but if what you say is true, if what that woman said is true, that you are responsible for murdering my husband's brothers, is it? He says, yeah. And their children? Yes. I did what I had to do for my nation, for my crown, and for my city. Queen Lenore says, Elias Drexel, you are relieved of command. I nominate Sebastian Crow and Veo Senya for the position. And given that Sebastian Crow is a former member of the Amethyst Academy, it seems that the only one who can, in- and that Paluto Jackson is a foreign national, a Caspian. Veo Senya, I name you Lord Commander of the Hooded Lanterns. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Your Majesty. Veo? Uh, I accept. <laughs> and I like get down on my knee and take a bow. There's no badge to give you. (laughs) I'll get one back. We're going to go get it. (laughs) Lord Commander. Lady Commander, whatever you prefer. Lord. I like Lord. Lord Commander. Yes. We have a choice to make. Will we side with the Amethyst Academy or the Silver Order? (laughs) I think that the Amethyst Academy is going to allow us the better choice in defeating the Queen. So be it. Knight Captain, you and your soldiers are to leave the city. I turn to River and I look her in the eye and I say, don't you make me regret this. And as for you, Lucretia Matthias, you grew up here in Drakenheim. I know this. You and your people may stay for the time being. You do not seem to be a threat. Go. I suppose the cha- this flame here will remain dark for now. I mean, they could light it before they go. <laughs> like, no. Like just a quick laugh. You can leave Dragon out of the darkness. <sighs> well, Lord Commander, <laughs> does the... Does the does, uh, He's, he's sitting down on the steps now and Petra and Ansem are kind of consoling him. <laughs> <laughs> he's got fired. He's got fired hard. I walk up to him and I say, I'm sorry. It had to be this way. But I still honor your commitment to the city and your guidance and your judgment. Let me make it right. I'll accept the Queen's judgment. As 
we all should, regardless of what time it is, our actions still have meaning and value. I deserve death for what I did, but let me find that death on the battlefield. If you're willing to help us fight the, the Queen of Thieves, the False Queen, then we'll take all the help we can get. Huh. Petra, Ansem, you in? Yeah. Eldrick, River, you with us? Yes. The Hooded Lanterns, the Amethyst Academy, and the Dragon Force. The Silver Order and the and the followers of the Falling Fire disperse from the cathedral. Hmm. And they turn. Sorry it had to be this way, says the Night Captain. I'm sorry too, because you are a valuable friend, an ally, but I think that the city needs more than just someone who's going to stay in their own box and not budge. Breaks my heart to see the see it, but I guess we've got a long journey ahead of us back Night. to Illyria. Night Commander, I hope that we meet again. And I hope it's on good terms. You were... No, I hope so too. You were a close friend. And you still are. I'll send you a letter sometime. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm gonna miss you. Made our choice. Yep. Let's see where the cards lay after we're <laughs> done. Uh, you just <laughs> what got card a game are we playing? <laughs> like a mix between like uh, crazy aids, <laughs> old maid, maybe some blackjack in there. And there's like uh, three decks, and, and it's like not quite complete. And like the the house rules of euchre. Yeah. So yeah. um. Yeah. Yeah. All well, right, Eldrick says. Now that they're gone. So they, they, do they, like, file out? Yeah. So can we defuse this bomb? There's much that we can do once we have the power of the tower. Power of the tower. <laughs> tower power. Tower power. <laughs> I have a few things to discuss. First, Sebastian. Yeah. If you can aid the Amethyst Academy in reclaiming this tower, you will be inducted as a full member of the Academy and awarded your circles. Commensure it with your talent. I accept. You're going to go back and get your diploma? Yeah. All That tower means something to me, too. Because my mother used to be a member of that tower. She was the Archmage of that tower. Yep. So going to that tower is the top of my to-do list, and I will reclaim it in the name of the Academy. Very well. Now, we have two issues to discuss. Mm -hmm. First is the affliction with you, Queen Lenore, and a few other arrangements that require the privacy and discretion of the Amethyst Academy and the interests of Drakenheim, and seeing now you veil our Lord Commander of the Hooded Lanterns of Drakenheim, and we have the Queen here in their presence. Your Queen is very sick. We know that. We have a very powerful enemy that we are working against. Who though she claims to be a thief, is not is obviously talented at, in, in magical capacities. But she's a nuisance. We will find a way around this. But we have to move forward. So first on the list is to reclaim the tower. And then... Once we reclaim the tower, there will be nothing the Queen of Thieves can do 
to deter us, because we will leverage the full might of the Amethyst Academy to securing the city. Okay. Then you have the ranger's help to do so in order to make sure that the queen stays safe, but also the borders of the city stay safe. I think we should close the gate for now. Pluto, what do you think? Which, which gate? The two gates that we have. We control them both. I'll be able to, with your permission, Lord Commander, I will help you transition into your command. But if you feel the need to operate in the field, I will defer to you for command. Okay. I mean, I I am going to be in the field. I like to have a hands-on approach to, you know, my command. I understand. Uh, but Not I really can use <laughs> or- several people who I trust, and I trust you, and I trust your children. And I think regardless of who has the name in charge, I still believe you hold a place at the top of the Hooded Lanterns. Assistant Regional Commander? To, <laughs> junior I Vice to Commander. To the Lenora commander. says... Regardless, Lord Command, uh, regardless, Elias Drexel, you will answer for what you did to the Von Castles and your role in the Civil War. Is that understood? Yes. As expected. Now, we also have another issue. And I turn to the uh, Academy. So, about this heir to Drakenheim that you need some help with. We need to figure out who that is. And we have a little piece of paper that we need opening to tell us. I don't need to open that piece of paper to tell you who the heir to Draconheim was. Oh, you can see through paper? No. Oh. Were you there signing it? I mean, I just want to open it because I want to open it. I just want to make sure <laughs> it was like valid. A You're yeah. just like, <laughs> I mean, know what's in it, but I just, I just want to open it. It's very clear now that you've been struggling so long something's happened with respect your majesty your memory is not what it used to be is it that is clear you have memories of your children you have memories of their lives you've been asking where they are two of your children were not in Drakenheim the day the meteor fell they were at the Agamemnon's academy Which one? Well, you must understand that the Von Kessel line is dragonborn. They are mages. And roughly half of their bloodline is manifests at a very young age. So did both the king's daughters. They cannot inherit. What? Why can't why? By the 19th Edict of Lumen, anyone with sorceress power that is a recognized member of the Amethyst Academy forfeits all noble title and claim. Oh. El- Eldrick, did I know? Did I know them? Let's just say that there was an incident a few years ago and they have both gone missing. They've both gone missing? Yes. Why didn't you tell me? Because otherwise, the, other, the only other option for you, Sebastian, was nullification. Fair? Fair? Thank you. Thank you, Eldrick, for... uh... It was better that you didn't know. Katarina and Eliza von Kessel, as befits their royal station, were privately inducted into the Amethyst Academy, and it was not 
widely publicized to the members of the academy that they were members. They stayed in Witchcross with a gentleman named Eric, one of the nobles that was from Dragonheim. They lived there outside the tower proper. Eric? Eric. I believe he was a confidant of the the steward. His house has long been the ones that were associated. After this incident occurred, both Katarina and Eliza went missing. What about Eric? Oh, he's still alive in Witchcross, yes. In... what? Does he know you're alive? Well, I don't know. I haven't... I only knew him when I was little. When I was growing up, I... he... he wasn't around. But I was worried that he was in Draconheim the day... the day that the meteor fell, but I guess not. I mean, this is good news. No, the two... the two, um... Eliza and Katarina had been in the city to attend their brother's wedding. And they had been brought back to Witchcross, Witchcross Tower, only a few days before the meteor fell in the same carriage that Sebastian was brought to Witchcross in. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's when I met them. But I didn't know. Hmm. I didn't know. It's been a long secret, but we can say this in confidence now. Therefore, regardless of what the king's will might say, only Leonard von Kessel was the, was the only eligible heir to the throne of Drakenheim. Unless... Well, if Leonard can't take the throne... Maybe his son can. Open the will. What do you mean? I'm going to pull out the old... The old will. And the other documents. Grab the other documents. The will. I wrote it in here. The cost is high. No, it's actually (laughs) (laughs) N.A. The last will of the King of Drakenheim. And we also have the... um, descendants of the Von Kessel family which actually might illuminate Pluto Jackson his family and his family this will has been sealed magically it can only be opened by those who hold the flame keeper sigil and the steward sigil oh darn it they were right here <laughs> no the stewards is my dad we had the flame keeper well we, at least we know where they are or who they're with. But it doesn't matter. Because Leonard is, regardless. But if you look at the family tree, there is the possible. Indeed. Yeah, Indeed. right there. Indeed. Mm. So the queen says, then we must make the arrangements to have my grandson brought to Drakenheim. Should he be brought now? Or should we is he secure? Is deal he with the queen first? He he resides in Caspia. I don't, I don't mean to alarm any of you, says Lenore, but that woman is very canny. And if she knows any of your familial connections, do you have family nearby? The closest would be Jupiter Jones. Do you have family nearby? Any of you? Oh, I mean, I'm searching for my family. My family's in uh, Amberwood Village. Why? Is she going to do something? Do you think she might make... A Had mo- you not considered that as a possibility? Not until this very moment, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why would my family be brought into this? They're, they have nothing because to do with this. Because she can use them against you. Oh my god. She's already using a lot against us, to be honest. Uh, no, this is my family. No, I know, but like, I need add to, that to the list. I and if she knows back. about Pluto Jackson's line, it's not... Or does she, Do you know if she would know? Would she have any way of knowing? Is there any way that this could be done? 
I mean, she knows a lot of things that we don't know how she gets that information. I mean, just let's just assume that she does. What do I do about my family? I have a family. Maybe they need to go to Caspia. Maybe they need. To, <laughs> maybe we all just need to go to Caspia. <laughs> They, Not all of us. They, they just built. They just built a new home. Yeah, maybe they should stay in Pluto's home as guests. Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to get them out of here. We need to set up a new base of operations. I mean, the cathedral is open now. This place will be a ruin. We should collect everything of value here and leave it. You fought a good fight in claiming it. I know how many people gave their lives for it. But there's nothing here but dust. I will reclaim the tower, but first I'm going back to Amberwood Village. Okay. I think that would be the best course of action would be for all of us to head back. We need to batten down the hatches, secure what holdings we have, and then we will discuss the resources that we can commit at this time to securing the tower. That must be our next goal. Once that is done, we will be able to activate its defensive powers. And we will be able to get some control over the situation. Okay. Let's go check on your family first before doing anything. And then we'll check the tower off the list. <laughs> The list is growing and it's not going to be any smaller and we just need to start checking well things then, off. I am impressed with you three, says Queen Lenore. Thank you. You've done very well. My mind is a fire. This city is a golden glowing place but it is a, almost like a dream now. And I find it rather difficult to concentrate for so long. Do you have more of the medicine? Do I? Yeah. Yeah. I brewed a few when we okay. were having downtime. Yes. I will need some more. Perhaps then my mind will come back to me. Maybe the Academy can help figure out I can more. give them my notes. They Are could... you giving her some of that brew that Oscar Yorin con conducted? Concocted? It's the best thing we have right now. Actually, we concocted it. It may be the best course forward. We found ways to stabilize delirium so that we can use it to conduct magic. It might very well be that there is hope for her. There's hope for you, Your Majesty. We'll have to see. Time will tell. That's all we can that's all we can do. <sighs> I, uh, I go through my large array of things spread across the ground and I pull out one of the potions and I go and hand it to Queen Lenore. Cool. I, I'm not getting my bag back, am I? You will. Pluto, I need you to carry most of this stuff. <laughs> and Eldrick says, Amethyst Academy. don't worry. I will help. And he gestures to his guardian. Oh. Thank you. Um, I have a lab at the tower. I also have a lab. Where else do I have a lab? I have a few labs. You have a portable lab. You uh, have a lab in that uh, that guy's basement. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I... Yeah, mm -hmm. I, have, I have labs scattered around the city. Stick with the tower. Sebastian, how have your skills developed in the time since? Um, you can set things on fire I can, better. I can control my flames. I, well done. I killed a lot of gnolls using fire magic. I was a little afraid to use fire magic before, but yeah, things are progressing. Um, well, it seems to me that if Veo will be the Lord Commander of Drakenheim and Paluto will be acting as Lord Regent and that maybe we can see about having you take up your mother's old office. You'll have to demonstrate conclusively to the council that your skills are in the right place. I can uh -huh, do that. Uh -huh, I can do uh -huh, that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, it's not like me does, magic where I just... Does that mean that I get a say? Eyes. Does that mean that I get a say in the way that, that the Amethyst Academy 
conducts its work here in Drakenheim? If you are nominated and confirmed, Sebastian, you must understand that your duty, first and foremost, will need to be to the Academy. But, given the circumstances, it will also mean that you have a duty to Drakenheim as well. And I can do good things for this city. Perhaps, yes. And the people in it. And the people in it. The magic people in it. I can help. I'd like that. You could be a hero. You are a hero. It comes with some nice perks as well. Free wine? Like a buffet. Like a, like a really big buffet. Like a rewards card. Like mm. a continuous buffet. Think of a new wand with delirium on the tip. Yeah. Or they could add it to your current wand. Yeah, my wand's pretty cool. Yeah. I like my wand. Well then, what is your next? What is our next step? We reconvene in Emberwood Village, mm-hmm. and then we go after the tower. Very well, Lord yes. Commander. That sounds good. Um. Lord Commander does sound good. <laughs> nice ring I'm going to convene with the rangers and get them posted and ready to defend the walls of the city. I think with the queen running amok, it's dangerous for people to come in. It is. We will need to consolidate our position and prepare to head out towards retaking the tower in the weeks to come. Now how about lunch and a rest? And sleep. Yeah, I like could that. also. Sounds good. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I could really use a rest. I extra think that that's lunch where, is an extra we'll, munch. We'll, uh, leave things off for the night. Um, but you guys did level up, and so Woo! we can talk about that now. Uh, and uh, what your what your choices are for level nine. Oh my gosh, I know what it is. Um, oh my and, gosh. And uh, wrap that up there, as uh, as you head back with the scattered remnants of the hooded lanterns towards the barracks and a very changed order of power (laughs) in the city of Drakenheim. Oh my gosh. As I head back to the barracks, I pick up and I'm looking at the hand crossbows trying to pick a real nice one. Oh, yes. Oh, you're, you're doing crossbow expert. Of course I am. I've been waiting so long. So are you, are you taking another level of rogue and taking crossbow expert? I am. Yes. So one more level in rogue crossbow expert. Pew, 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 pew. So many shots. I need to pick new spells and that's probably a decision that's going to take me a while because I might also drop an old one Mm -hmm. to get a new one. Do I get level? I do get fifth level spells. (gasps) Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) Um, So, (laughs) Veo, as the new Lord Commander... Oh, gosh. Under certain circumstances that you deem necessary, you may be able to bring hooded lanterns with you in the field. Wow. If you do so, (laughs) you gain a special ability. Um, Once per rest, you can use the power of the Lord Commander as a bonus action to command up to three hooded lanterns to make an extra attack as their reactions. If you choose to bring hooded lanterns into the field with you, wow. of course they are finite in number, and they are just soldiers. But if you do choose to bring them with you, you can. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, you can requisition and bring them with you. You need to use your discretion when you do so, though. Yeah, I'm not going to kill my whole army in one go. There needs to be people at the gate, but I have an army. <laughs> 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 like we have to control the game, we have to control, but I have an army. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna have to choose between animate objects, cloud kill, synaptic static. I mean, you could unlearn a spell and take two. Ooh. Yes. Do you learn any new spells at fourth level? Is it arcane trickster? So, no. It's and not saying Pluto Jackson. What's happening for you, at level nine? I. uh I become a little bit harder to kill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fighters. Um, oh, wait, indomitable. I think I do uh, oh, can you re-roll can re-roll saving throws. My saving throw. 
Cool. Because I'm good at failing saving throws, so I know that this will come in handy. <laughs> like, I'm actually going to use it a lot. Nice. Well, once nice. per rest. I think I actually get one new spell, but it has to be um, either illusion or cool. charm. What was the other one? Enchantment. Well, there we are. What are the next steps going to be? The tower. Nice. Finally get to explore the tower. I do not trust so the Amethyst Academy at all. But yeah, now, uh, it, it, but, but is there anything that, that you want to discuss now that you have the, the advantage of privacy between the three of yourselves? <sighs> when we're having our sleepover, <laughs> and we're <laughs> and we're staring up at the ceiling. Or did we go back to like the tower for a long rest or something? Or something? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We found a little spot or in your hut, my tiny hut. But the, the, honestly, like the only the only way I can work with the Amethyst Academy is if you're in charge. Well, guess what. <laughs> Yeah, but Pluto, you're going to be in charge of it all for a yeah. while. Listen, Pluto. <laughs> listen, Leverage that. Listen to this. Listen to this. Okay. You take up the mantle of Drakenheim, right? You, you with me? You following so far? I'm following. Okay. He sounds on so your, sad about on it. On your right is the Lord Commander. <laughs> I so strong. Who rules your armies and who you know is a trustworthy ally. Yeah. On your left is the person in charge of all of the magical ongoings in Drakenheim. And you know I'm going to make the right choice for you. Where does your allegiance lie? You. It's always been with you. Don't tell the Academy. Can they scry on us? It's always been with you in the last while. (laughs) We've known each other for like time frame, like six weeks. How long have we been in Drakenheim? A couple weeks. That's it? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And in those weeks, a lot of... Okay, no. Time stretches <laughs> when time. you when you're when you're dealing with I mean, life. It feels and like death. we've been playing m- months, but yeah, it feels yeah. like it's been months. I'd have to go back over the the actual diaries. I know that we did have a couple weeks, a couple times where we had like at least one or two weeks of downtime, and there were a few periods where like a few days passed. Yeah, and I think what we will do as well is I'll give you guys a couple weeks of downtime that if you want to do things and prepare for your your next steps. You will we'll, we'll say that here, like as uh, with the consolidation of the factions, we'll we'll take like two or three weeks of downtime for you guys to prepare to train up, get ready for the next things, and just like fall into the new order of things. Mm-hmm. Can I study the spell book some more and gain? Yeah. How many yeah. spells will you give me from? Uh, we'll ritual? we'll work out the exact okay. details right. when, when we know. Um, but yeah, you would you'd be able to study your mother's spell book and do do some more things. I don't any any other like organizational things that you guys want to do you have a couple time i need to command people now yeah. day job you know yeah <laughs> no this is gonna be good pluto i i i know you've only known me i, I have a bad feeling about this what's the worst that could happen <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. that's that's the uh, it's no it's not no it's the three of us it's always look, been the three of us and it always will be look, the three of us look we started with the academy the we're gonna end is, with the academy the focus is we gotta deal with the amethyst academy get the tower back but i have to tell you that i'm worried about their intentions and i always have been and that's why i've been practicing murdering mages for the last like, yeah yeah but i'm a weeks. mage i know but just do you in trust case, me i i have to like batman do you, you. Do i have you to trust, be able to butt do you trust me i have to be able to batman do you, you trust me i do do you promise you can't mm-hmm. lie i can't but it's just if you're gonna spin around and be like i'm making delirium bombs for everyone no, just for dollar you. each They're one gold each for you. one They're gold for you to blow bombs. up your enemies <laughs> so with the decision with the academy i you're right. I didn't fully trust either faction, but I trust that the Academy will at least be the most beneficial party in helping defeat the Queen because that's what they are willing to do. And that's what they saw as an issue. They were willing to work with the other faction. The other faction was not, so they lost it. Lord Jackson, we are now your your small table, your small council. Yeah. And um, I will like tell Merlin. you... like Merlin. Yes. <laughs> the Amethyst Academy. I'm has... like Lance a lot. Yes. yes. Look, it's not Eldred that I is don't... quick to remind you, though, that you do have to reclaim the tower and that there will be a process 
before yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. He's kind of he's already writing checks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Listen, um, we're gonna build a new tower. It's gonna be it's called. It's gonna have a pool on top. Yeah. What's and your, gonna... Wait, what's your mom's name again? Uh, uh, Lenneth. We should name it Lenneth Tower. Oh, I was gonna oh. call it Sebastian Keep, but you know, <laughs> no, we're gonna name it after your mom. No, we're naming it after your mom. That's <laughs> I don't. We'll see. We'll see. Sebastian <laughs> Keep is also on the list. Listen, don't make me flex my Lord Commander. Hey, 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 hey. Look, hey. I think we're all getting ahead of ourselves. We probably have to go clear this you, tower. Do you, can I wear a crown? Do you guys have a crown for me? You can wear a tiara. Why do you need a crown? You can wear a tiara and or the god. Uh, King of the Mages. <laughs> no, no, no. You, no, no, no. no. Uh, Aldrich says, we don't ever. Wait, you're not in my tiny hut. This is a private conversation. Just, just as, a, as a psychic reminder, <laughs> don't, don't, don't float. Mage King, any anywhere near it, it's bad news, bears. <laughs> no like, mage not kings, a, not no. a topic to joke about. I, I I think Sebastian would understand that. Yes, like that in in the old hit, like the ancient history of the world, the notion of sorcerer kings and mage kings Scary. was like synonymous with tyranny. Um, and so <laughs> that's um, yeah. So like the Amethyst Funky. Academy is actually Crown. really careful to avoid that mm. um one of the things that was mentioned tonight was like the the edicts of lumen which were basically an agreement 300 years ago between the academy and the church and several of the nations of the world that basically laid out on like the laws under which the Adamethus academy would be allowed to operate mm. and one like that notion that a mage cannot inherit like any sort of rulership or throne yeah. was a really key element of that. So no kings. Well, Pluto, Only... you will be the Lord of Drakenheim. So he gets a crown. But honey, you should see me in a crown. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's where we're going to end for the night. Nice. Yeah. A big thank you to our cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe for playing. Uh, and of course, as always, uh, Kelly. Uh, yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. Hi. <laughs> We're on the script. I don't even have yeah. my script up. What am I talking about? Oh, no. Oh, hey. Cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. And a huge thank you to Kyle <laughs> for working behind the scenes. There we go. I, I forgot my cue. I got lost. We, thank you, Kyle. Yay, Man, Kyle. You're, you're so important, and I love you, and I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I also will take this moment to uh, thank Clayton for keeping us organized behind the scenes. Woo! And a special thank you tonight for Monty for playing every <laughs> 9, NPC in the whole world. Characters. Yeah, so 9,000 characters. Yeah, 9,000 characters. So good job tonight. Yes. And thank you again, Kyle. I only mix up the accents like once or twice. Yeah, that's yeah, forgivable. That yeah. was very... Like, <laughs> like you had a lot on your plate tonight. <laughs> Um, big shout out uh, to Tabletop Audio, uh, as always, for the ambient music. Uh, it's a great way to increase the uh, atmosphere of your own game. Uh, check it out, tabletopaudio.com. It's all free, and we use it all the time. Yes, be sure to visit our merch store at Teespring. Check out the links below for all your favorite t-shirt designs like Dragon Force, uh, of course, the popular Yes, Yes, Yes. Um, and check it out at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch or the links below. If you are enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can follow it by finding the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon dudes. For those of us that become patrons of our show, like it's hugely appreciated and respected. It allows us to consider new and ambitious projects and make improvements to the stream and everything we're, we're, we're doing. We've been able to uh, do some awesome work with some amazing artists that's going to be coming down the pipeline. Uh, and that has all been thanks to our patrons for enabling those things and making those things possible. Uh, so a big thank you to you all uh, for that. Um, and also you can catch us this weekend at Fan Expo Toronto. So Ooh, if yeah. you are what? Yeah, Fan Expo yeah. this weekend. And, uh, and the three of us are going to be in cosplay as our characters. Now, I make that sound like a big deal for myself, but literally I'm throwing on a coat and calling it a day. <laughs> it's going to look great. I mean, these okay. these two have made some insane things. So. I, I did put a lot of effort into it. I'm, I'm downplaying it, but you should see what these two have done. Uh, Joe's in the midst of finalizing his entire suit of armor that he's built. I'm a clunk. And clunk, um, clunk around. Jill has sent me photos that will haunt me for the rest of my life. <laughs> 
uh, of her as in, in full cat. Just <laughs> Veo lives. I don't even. So there's good. no Jill anymore. It's just Veo Senya, and it yeah. is it is both amazing and horrifying. So it's come so to Fan good. Expo and see us there. <laughs> also, if you do uh, join our Patreon, you can also join our amazing Discord community where you can chat with us about all things Drakenheim, all the cool things that we're up to, D&D questions. There's like character creation, rules questions. Behind you can scenes. even talk to Monty about behind the scenes theories that he will either uh, agree or deny or just not <laughs> give you the you answers on, on, but you can chat with him about potential fan theories and what's going on behind the scenes of Drakenheim. And we're not allowed in that chat and it makes me sad. So please, if you join our Patreon, don't forget to join the Discord. We love chatting with you guys there. Uh, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything D&D including advice for Dungeon Masters and guides for players. You'll also find all prior episodes from this campaign available for your viewing pleasure there as well. And we are now on Apple Podcasts, Google Woo! Play, and Spotify. You can take Drakenheim with you for your listening pleasure as well as viewing pleasure uh, by getting it in podcast form. So follow us on all those formats. Uh, download the podcast version. We are going to be playing catch up so the current episodes will still not be on podcast formats yet uh we're going to go through the backlog and make sure everything's up there and once it is then the episodes will release concurrently so uh, for those of you that, that are still following along not the latest episode is up in podcast form but the first five are mm -hmm. so we're getting there we're yeah. getting there hard work by kyle again at going Woo! through Thanks, uh, kyle. kyle's been working amazingly hard to remaster the audio uh if you've been following us for a long time you know some of our earlier episodes had some kind of spotty audio quality and he's been doing his very best to remaster that and really improve that and he's been doing some amazing work so far yes. and if you are checking us out on the podcast you can also be sure to join us live next tuesday when we record the campaign live on twitch check us out from 6 p.m to 9 p.m eastern time on twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes and you can also watch all of the episodes when they show up on youtube thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time in the dungeons of drakenheim mm -hmm.